Hi, welcome to today's Kitchen Side Chat. Um, I'm Tamara and I work for CCUA. And today's Kitchen Side Chat will be on winter squash. So today we're gonna talk about winter squash. Um, the difference is between winter squash, so you've got like your spaghetti squash, your butternut squash, and your acorn squash. Between like the winter squash and the summer squash is gonna be a big difference. And so I think a lot of people are intimidated by winter squash and feel like these just are something that you buy and you put on a, like a little thing of hay and you stick it outside your porch. But today we're really gonna dive into why it's so delicious to eat these and how they're super easy to make. So don't be intimidated by them anymore. We want you to dive in and next time you see one of these at the farmer's market or at a farm stand or you get one in your CSA, that you are not intimidated by it and that you are gonna know how delicious and easy they are to make. So, it's all about some winter squash today. Okay, so the main differences between winter squash and summer squash is what we kinda highlighted a few weeks ago. Actually, it was a long time ago, it was in July, but it feels like yesterday. So summer squash, a lot of the zucchini, yellow squash, things like that, that people were getting out of their garden are gonna have a more tender skin and they're not gonna be able to be stored for very long. Typically on a summer squash, like a zucchini, yellow squ squash, patty pan, you're gonna be able to chop those up and roast them and eat the seeds and the outside skins. But on a winter squash like these, we're typically not gonna to wanna to eat the outside skins and we're not gonna typically wanna eat the seeds unless we roast them. But in my opinion, I love them roasted. So just like um, pumpkin seeds, you can roast these just as well. So we'll kind of talk about that a little bit today. That was the beep of my oven. So I just turned it off and I have some squash in there, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay, so it's quickly becoming squash season here in Columbia. Um, and as y'all are starting to see in CSAs, a farm, at the farmer's market, at different places, you're starting to see squash. And so I feel like a lot of people think that they're just decorations, but I'm here to say that they're great to eat and we're gonna talk about some ways to eat them today. So one of the reasons why I personally love squash so much is that I, to me, there are a lot of wholesome meals that you can make with squash that are nutritious, nutritionally dense and that I feel like it's a vegetable that a lot of us don't typically eat. So once you start to learn how to eat it, it's something that's really delicious and that we really appreciate eating. Something I wanted to touch on with squash is that they are a powerhouse of nutrition. So um, typically most of these squash have between 298 and 300% of your daily value of vitamin A just in, in one serving of this bad boy. Um, same with 49% vitamin C, 11% B, B6, which is something you don't typically get in a lot of fruits and vegetables, 10% of your vitamin E, and something that I think a lot of people who have done keto or paleo know is especially like the spaghetti squash. This is really known for being a great carb replacement. So if you're trying to be low carb or you can't have gluten um, because of like a dietary need, this is gonna be your new best friend. So if you haven't made spaghetti squash, this is seriously it. So the great thing about all, all these winter squashes is that they're really low in carbs, but they have pretty high value of fiber between 10 and 20%, depending on what you're having per serving. And they're super low in calories. So basically I'm just trying to convince you that squash is awesome and I want you to try it. So first thing we're gonna to highlight today is gonna to be our spaghetti squash. So we're just gonna talk about this guy. So when you get a spaghetti squash at the store or at the farmer's market, I want you to um, wash it. And depending on which way you wanna do it. So I like to crock pot my spaghetti squash because I think it's easy. Um, it's easy, especially for, for everyone who's really stressed right now and we're all working. Um, or you could roast it, you can grill it. We're gonna talk about the different ways you can cook it. But if you are going to put it in the oven, or you're going to put it in the crock pot, or even if you're gonna roast it, you're gonna to wanna to split it in half. You can split it in half this way, or you can split it in half this way. So the, what I've done today is to split it in half this way. I do wanna point out, anytime you're cutting a winter squash, you need to have a very sharp knife with a very sharp tip, because this core is really hard to get through and you're gonna to have to really get in there. So I split these so that we can see the seeds. So um, I'm gonna show you today kind of what I do whenever I get a squash at home right before I start to roast it, cook it, and we're gonna talk about the different ways for a spaghetti squash that you can cook it. So I already washed this guy, split him in half. We're gonna take all those seeds out. 
So I normally just take a spoon and we're gonna kinda just go right into the seed cavity. Now, don't throw these seeds into your compost yet. What you can do with these seeds is you can roast them and they're just like yummy pumpkin seeds. So what I like to do is I will save a bunch of these seeds and then whenever I get a pumpkin, I'll roast them all together. As you can see, they're very similar to a pumpkin seed. And they even smell like pumpkin. So it's a win-win. So on these guys, I'm gonna save these. I'm gonna save actually all of my squash seeds today and I'm gonna roast them. So I wanna see, it is gonna be a little hard and sometimes when you get down to the bottom, when it's getting pretty tough to get all of the kind of the guts out, I'm gonna use a knife to kind of cut it free. So on a spaghetti squash, this is one of the only squash that I actually don't cut it into cubes or anything like that. You're going to wanna either roast it, cook it, grill it, whatever you do, you're gonna to wanna to do it in either like a boat shape like this, or you're gonna to wanna to cut it in half and do big chunks. And the reason why is because once you've cooked your spaghetti squash, you're gonna actually get it into like a noodle. And I'll show you what I mean. Because if you've never had a spaghetti squash, you're going, what do you mean a noodle? I'll show you that once you get it cooked, it's gonna turn into almost like a noodle, and that's why it's a great pasta replacement. So, this is what it looks like once you've gotten all those seeds out. So, we got kind of some little hangies, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt us. So you're gonna take that. And so what I've done here is I actually put a, one of these spaghetti squash. Now I cut it in the other direction. So I'm gonna show you. I cut it in this direction versus cutting it in this direction. Same thing. Took the seeds out and I actually put it in the crock pot. I put both sides in the crock pot with about a cup and a half of water and I let it cook on low during the day while, while I was actually at work. So whenever I got home, this is actually cold because I put it in the fridge, but you can do it hot, cold, whatever you wanna do. And so you're gonna take your squash and you're gonna take a fork and if you do it in the crock pot, it's gonna like, just like butter. It's gonna fall apart. So you can pour it in a bowl or something. I'm showing you kind of like, I wanted to show you that it looks like pasta. So you're literally just gonna take a fork and because the crock pot really just cooks it down, it's gonna be like butter. It's gonna be super easy. You're just gonna scrape it with a fork and get all that goodness out of there. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. So this is your delicious pasta. So this is gonna be a carb-free pasta and it's super good. Um, you, can, you can serve it in many ways. Like what I really like to do is I like to put pesto on it, mix it up, put a little Parmesan cheese, um, you can even, I've seen people use this, keep it in there, loosen up the squash part, and then use it almost like as a boat and like serve things in this. You could put a meat in this, you could put like some bell peppers, you could make like a fajita type of thing. You could literally put your sauce right in here, put like any kind of saute vegetables, or like I'm doing, I'm probably gonna serve this on a plate with a salad. And then I will put like my pesto or like my husband doesn't like pesto. You could do a spaghetti sauce and that's it. You've got your like low carb pasta, but it's like really good, super easy. Let's say you don't have a crock pot or you don't want to cook in the crock pot. No problem. So you can take your squash, make sure you take the seeds out. You've washed it and you can take two sides of your squash, put it in a glass baking dish or some sort of a baking dish, put about two cups of water, cover that with foil and bake it. I typically bake it about 350 to 400 for, it takes a while, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how big your squash are. You can also grill it. Put some olive oil on these bad boys, flip them, grill it. That's one of my favorite ways to make it, but it takes a while. So again, depending on how much time you have. Um, also, there's another way I'm gonna show you real fast with spaghetti squash that I actually read online and I tried it and it works great, is that you can take your, your squash and you can cut it almost into rings and I'll show you what I mean. I baked some to see if it would work. Okay, so these are nice and hot, but I took my spaghetti squash and I cut it into rings. So you can cut it into rings, put some olive oil, salt and pepper. And this is very, very hot. But essentially what I read online is that if you wanna have longer noodles, noodles, <laughs> You can take your rings, salt and pepper, roasted it for, I roasted it for like about 40 minutes at 400 degrees. And then you can take this, and it's done, but it's very hot, I'll show you. Take this, 
and literally just kind of flick it with your fork and it's really, really hot. So hopefully you can still see this. And you have these long, beautiful noodles. Look at these beauties. I mean, that's just like pasta. And it smells delicious. Literally, it's that easy. That's all I did. And so what's nice about this is like, in my opinion, I like this a little bit better than the crock pot version because it is a little less wet and it's more like a noodle. So if you have somebody that's like, not so much on not having a pasta or like a child that you don't think they'll like the mushy consistency of my crock pot spaghetti squash, try it like this. I have been really impressed with how crisp it is and it really is like a noodle. So you're legitimately just taking these beautiful long strands and you can put, again, put your sauce on it, serve it just how you would a pasta. You could put an Alfredo on it, whatever you want to do, like it's that easy. And like you're saving carbohydrates and not only that, but it's delicious. It's a vegetable, it's high in nutrients and you're gonna feel really good about it, serving it to your family. So there's that. So I'm gonna put these back. So that's pretty much all about spaghetti squash. Hopefully I've inspired you to cook it if you've never cooked it, or at least to try it if you, so it is really that easy. There's lots of different ways. If you're interested in like a different way of cooking spaghetti squash, there's tons of recipes online as well. There's also a thing called spaghetti squash boats. And a lot of people cook the spaghetti squash like this and they load it with different things and they bake it in the oven or you can bake it and then you can fill it afterwards. I've seen people do this kind of like a Mexican taco night, you can do that. Um, you could do like, it's really like there's so many options out there. So give it a try. And if you do, write below and tell us what you did with your spaghetti squash. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna talk about is butternut squash. One of my very favorite types of squash. I love it because I don't have it that often, but when I do, I know it's officially fall. So I was super excited about butternut squash. So the first thing, um, let's see. So there's a lot of varieties that you can cook and serve this, including a lot of people know about butternut squash soup. I think that's pretty common. So soups, roasted, pureed, grilled. Again, it's very similar to spaghetti squash, but the one thing about this one is particularly when I cook it, I will typically either roast it in big chunks or whole, or I will cut it into cubes. So that's the only difference between like a spaghetti squash. You're going to not want to do it in cubes because you want to get those beautiful noodles. Well, with a butternut squash, you can just easily roast it in cubes and I'll show you here. There you go. Like those beautiful cubes. Whoop, I'm dropping them everywhere. But you can do it like that. And again, just olive, olive oil, salt and pepper. Mm, it's so good. That only took me 30 minutes. It's buttery, it's nutty, it's fresh, it's got tons of nutrients for your family. And it's something too, if you're not sure if you'll like butternut squash, you can mix it with, sometimes I'll do a roast and I'll cut a bunch of cubes up. And the same thing, what I'll do is I'll wash this, I'll cut it, I'll remove the seeds. Now the cool thing about this is I'll show you, once you cut it, the seeds are only in one area on this. The rest is like all the delicious flesh that we can eat. So if you want to cube it up for your family, but you don't know if they'll like it, you can mix it, cube up a bunch of it, and you can um, roast it with, one of my favorite things to roast it with is Brussels sprouts, sweet potato, pumpkin, um, a little bit of carrots, and you can really make this roast like some onions, and it's beautiful on the plate. You can throw in some little cherry tomatoes if you want. Put it on um, a cookie sheet, olive oil, salt and pepper, whatever you want to do. Roast it for 400 for 30 to 40 minutes, about halfway. Take your fork, toss it a little bit. If you need a little bit more oil, you can. And then from there, I think that that's a good way to introduce people to squash if they've never had it before because you have so many things you could try on your plate that um, a lot of times they'll think the squash is a sweet potato as well. So it might be a good way to introduce somebody that's a little bit not sure if they want to try butternut squash. Okay, so again, we're going to do it just like we did the last one, but I actually haven't prepped this one at all. So when I do these, I normally cut off the bottom. And again, you're going to want a really sharp knife. And then cut the top. And look at that beautiful color. It's just such a pretty color. To me, this is like fall. Like as soon as I start cutting up a butternut squash, it's fall. We're there. So I'm really excited about it. 
Okay, so again, you wanna have a really sharp knife. And this can be dangerous, so I wouldn't do this like if you have a really small child nearby or have a small child do this. Once you cut it, it's like super easy, but just trying to get through that shell can be hard. And again, it's not gonna be super even, that's okay. We're not too worried about it. Oh my goodness, so we hit the jackpot with this one. There's hardly any seeds. Yay! Okay, so again, we're gonna take our seeds out with our spoon. Okay, so dig your, your spoon in there. This one is a little bit harder, in my opinion, to get the seeds out. Sometimes I'll take a knife. I may end up showing you how to do that here in a minute. But you're gonna to wanna to dig all the seeds out. Again, you can roast these, you can compost these. I think they taste great. You could save them until you have your pumpkin seeds, roast them all together. Put some, same, same thing like you would pumpkin seeds. Like you could put like a little ranch seasoning on them. You could do salt and pepper. You could do garlic, salt, like whatever you wanna do. Okay, so took my seeds out. I'm doing your butternut squash. Um, in my opinion, I normally cut it into like two manageable chunks on each side. And then I like to take a knife. Now you can use a vegetable peeler. I will say though, when you use a vegetable peeler, you have to peel several, 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 several layers, like four or five layers to get all the way down to the delicious innards. So what I like to do is take a sharp knife and cut along the outside, getting all of that peel off. And I'll kind of show you what it looks like if you don't get it all off. Okay, so you can tell here I did not get it all off. It's pretty easy to tell this, because of the color I got it all off, this I did not get it all off. So you're gonna wanna cut pretty deep and get all the way around it. I'll show ya. Again, this can be kind of hard to do. I wouldn't do this around children, just because it is really tough to cut, especially if you don't have a really sharp knife. It's gonna be really hard, and it could be dangerous if you slipped or something. So just be very, very careful when you're doing this at home. Okay, there it is, it's all done. Beautiful. So again, um, a couple ways I like to do this, because I like to make a butternut squash soup, which is what I'm gonna do with this one. I am going to take this, and I typically do cut it into cubes. So kind of cubes as well, like if you try to get, try to get the cubes as even as you can, just because they'll cook more even. So again, this isn't the most normal shaped thing in the world. So it is kind of hard to get those even cubes, but try your best. Okay, so then we're just gonna dice it up into some cubes. And again, you can roast this in the oven. You could cook this on the stove top. You could um, easily crock pot it. What I like to do when I'm making my soup is I like to roast it in the oven on a cookie tray, then let it cool. Then I like to throw it in the crock pot with my vegetable um, broth and my onions and my garlic and my fresh herbs and all of that. Or you could easily then just throw it on the stove top and do the same thing. I like to roast it because I think it has a sweeter flavor. But this is, that's pretty much it. And like with this, once you have it in the cubes, you can do anything you want with it. Again, if you want to make a puree to put it in like, I know a lot of people use squash kind of like to introduce it to things. So you could like make a puree. So all you would do is you take your beautiful cubes and you could either boil them, roast them, bake them, like sky's the limit. Basically, you just want to get this, the cubes really tender. And then after they're completely cooled, you're gonna put it in like either a food processor or a blender and put like a little bit of vegetable broth or some sort of a broth. And you're gonna buzz it up into a puree. And then you can, again, add it to mac and cheese. You can add it to like anything, like sauces, anything you want. Add it, you know, you can make a sauce out of it, add it to your chicken. You can add like something that I know that people have done is if you want to add it to like stuffing or like make a big giant vegetable roast. Like once you've got it peeled and everything, and my hands are orange, just so you know, once I wash them, it'll be okay. But just so you know, your hands do feel a little bit dry and a little bit orange when you're taking that peel off, but it's nothing to worry about. 
So yeah, I mean, really the sky's the limit on that. Um, let me see, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. So if you're gonna roast this, I like to do the cubes and I did it on my cookie sheet back here, but you're gonna do it at 400 degrees. And I did my spaghetti squash and my butternut squash together, but this is kind of what it looks like. I spread out all my cubes, olive oil, salt, pepper. You can add garlic salt, onion salt, whatever you want. I kept it simple, because I'm actually gonna make this into a soup, so I don't want too many flavors. And then you can roast it 400 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes in between. You're gonna give it a toss. If it looks dry, put a little bit more olive oil. That's it. And then I'll take that, and then I'll take onions, garlic, fresh herbs, and I'm gonna buzz it all together and make a beautiful soup out of it. Again, you can just toss it all together with sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so that's pretty much both of these. So I wanted to talk a little bit about acorn squash. So acorn squash, in my opinion, is the dessert of squashes. So when I was a kid, the, I had only ever had acorn squash every year at Thanksgiving or like around the holidays. I would typically have it served to me as a dessert. So it has like a nutty sweet taste. So when I was a kid, I was served this like cooked, like half, my, I think my grandma would roast it. Then she would put brown sugar all over it and, and um, butter all over it and sometimes even put some marshmallows. So while you could totally do that, I just think now that I have more of a refined palate than when I was like six or seven, um, I don't really think it needs all that because it's so good without it. So in my opinion, you're gonna, again, you're gonna wash it, you're gonna slice it, you can cut it either way. You can cut it this way, like kind of down the grooves, or you can cut it this way, horizontally, where you almost get like a bowl shape. So in my opinion, you're gonna wash it, cut it, take out those seeds. Again, save those bad boys, you're gonna to wanna to roast them later. And then what I really like to do is to drizzle, you can cut the bottom off and the top off to make it flat so it'll sit more like a bowl. Put that on a cookie sheet and then drizzle a little bit of honey, maybe some pecans, some walnuts, pistachios, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of cinnamon or like pumpkin pie spice if you want. And then I like to roast that at 400 degrees at 25 size of your squash. If you want to, again, you could cube it up. I've even seen people online cut it into like kind of almost wedges. They just cut it in like slices so you have like that beautiful ring. And then they'll roast those up as well. I like it to be savory as well in a soup. I think this would be beautiful with like a butternut squash and a sweet potato and like all of those things buzzed up into a delicious like autumn soup. Again, it's very similar to everything else we're talking about. You're gonna wash it, cut it, remove the seeds, and then cook it in whatever way you see fit. And that's pretty much it. But so that is all of these squashes, really, really condensed. I didn't wanna keep you all too long, but I just wanted to talk about how awesome these squashes are and that don't be intimidated by them because they're so easy to cook. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. You can cook them in a crock pot, you can cook them on a grill, in a stove, on a stove. Like the sky is really, really endless on these. So I hope that you cook some squash and I hope that you really understand that this guy is not just for decorating with, but also to eat. So thanks again for watching today's Kitchen Side Chat. Again, my name is Tamara and I did wanna kind of plug, if you are enjoying these videos, and you're enjoying what we do here at CCUA and you would like to support us, we're actually in a community drive right now called Community Thrives. Um, and we are in a challenge and we're trying to raise $10,000 for our programming. Um, due to COVID, we have not been able to have some of our fundraisers. So if you would like to donate, I mean, anything from $5 to $500, we would really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and link our Community Drives link below, but. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for your support. We could not do everything we do without you all. So thanks again. Please like, plant, and subscribe. Talk to you soon.